five years after the Kyoto Protocol was adopted to fight climate change, global atmospheric levels of greenhouse gases continue to rise. Scientists say that as levels of CO2 increase year by year, the risk of dangerous climate change becomes greater. Researchers speculate that temperatures could rise by as much as three degrees, bringing the prospect of sea level rise, crop failures and extreme weather events. But as yet, scientists are unable to define exactly what we face. Society is being asked to adapt to change while not knowing exactly what it will be. Euronews travelled to Oslo to meet Dr Paul Prestrud to see if he can lead us through the maze of speculation that surrounds climate change. A trained ecologist, he has spent much of his career working in polar regions. As the director of the Centre for Climate and Environmental Research in Oslo, Paul Prestrud advises governments and NGOs on how they should act in the face of this growing risk. Risk is what this is all about, isn't it, really? Yes. It's a big gamble, isn't it, basically, between industrialisation and mitigating climate change. How should this gamble be played out, do you think? We cannot say that in detail. We know that we are increasing the levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. We are quite sure that this has an effect on the climate. We predict that we end up with a climate change of about three degrees globally. What would be the effect of a three degree increase in uh, global temperatures? Most scientists, they will say that we will have dangerous climate change if we go about two to three degrees. Uh, I think the, the, the most important reason for saying that is the risk of food shortage and water shortage. In many parts of the world, you will have a strong desertification pressure and droughts in areas where you already have a, chance, a challenge when it comes to, 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 uh, to water supply and, and food production. So what you risk is uh, increased chance of hunger, starvation, and then you may also, may also have conflicts, uh, maybe also ma uh, migrations of, of a high number of people. Uh, then you also have the uh, chance of sea level rise. Um, most of the infrastructure in the world is located close to the shore. We have a lot of low-lying countries in the world that will really have big difficulties with tackling this if we have sea level rise about half a meter or, or more than a meter two, of course. You mentioned also that the, the result of a so three or four degree rise in uh, global temperatures could result in um, heat waves, etc., such as we had in 2003. Mm. We had a heat wave in Central Europe in 2003, in, in France, Switzerland, that resulted in a drop in food production in France by 20, 25%. Mm. And the primary productivity in the natural vegetation dropped by 30% just in one summer. Now, next month in Copenhagen, um, we have the uh, United Nations Conference on Climate Change, mm -hmm. when um, all the world's nations will gather together. Yeah. Um, do you think that's going to have a positive result? Do you think that they'll get an agreement? I'm pretty sure that we will not reach the agreement that we need. But it's, uh, let's hope that we come up with a good uh, kind of minimum agreement that can take over after Kyoto and that there is a will to negotiate further. Uh, one, one key to the deadlock we have now is the uh, is United States. But the President Obama, he needs a national platform before he can go out and commit himself internationally. If we need leadership here, if the world needs leadership, is America the country to do it? Yes. Is it the only country? That no, it's not the only country, but I think that's uh, the, the most important country. Europe is already there. They have their adopted policy um, where the, uh, the, the, the target is to reduce in 2020 by 20%, 20% yeah. energy efficient to 20% renewables. I don't think Europe will go further than 20%, maybe not even 20% reduction if the US is not uh, on board. You're an optimist? Yes, I am. Why? Because I believe in people. I believe in this, the, the democratic systems we have. Throughout the last three to five years, it has been a significant change in attitudes and in political will to put this 
question or issue on top of the political agenda. It's a question about how able we are to change attitudes and policies, policies and overthinking. And I'm not underestimated that challenge. It's an enormous challenge. It's about over win over strong economic interests, power between nations, between regions, mm. between private interests, etc. So it is extremely complex uh, political situation to change. But we have the tools and we have the recipe and we know what to do.